Hey Jeepers, this week's XJ Talk Show is overflowing with great content. We've got Jeep news about the all-new Renegade and what GM has in store to try and beat the Wrangler. That's right, Tony. There's YouTube love to share, voicemails to play, and we get all knobby with an all-new Radio Comtech. Josh talks about what's been going on in his garage lately, and we read the latest reviews from iTunes. Jeep Mama joins us again for an all-new Wrangler Talk, and we've got Amazon You Bought What Too, all on the next XJ Talk Show. Detours USA, custom builds for various make or model of vehicle, all original designs, and all made right here in the USA. Visit DetoursUSA.com for more details. That's DetoursUSA.com. The XJ Talk Show is for entertainment purposes only. Any advice or information provided on this show should be verified by alternative sources prior to making any changes or modifications to your vehicle. We are not experts, just people that enjoy the Jeep hobby and don't mind talking endlessly about it. P.S. We love you. Welcome to the XJ Talk Show. You're listening to the premier podcast about Jeep Cherokees, off-road adventures, tips that you can use, and interviews with people in the off-road industry. And now, here are your hosts, Tony and Josh. First week in G. Oh, the Jeep Renegade. Where do I start? Well, let's go back from a little bit of history, shall we? In 2006, Jeep introduced the Compass and later, based on the same, well, virtually the same exact platform, the Patriot, both with front wheel drive and continuously variable transmissions or CVT. They were not very well accepted by the Jeep faithful as well. They were lauded as being blasphemous to the brand's off-road heritage and early sales actually lagged at first anyways. But the new Jeep Renegade SUV allegedly fixes those brand sins with a powertrain that is peppy, but Jeep says still achieves in excess of 30 miles to the gallon. Both, well, at least on the highway, that is. And the vehicle is allegedly rugged enough to win its off-road to wear the brand's trail-rated badge. And we'll see about all that. With prices starting right around $18,000, which was just confirmed this week is for the base model, the first Italian-made Jeep should help the brand thrive in the competitive sub-market, uh, subcompact market, especially globally. Now, all of this we pretty much already know. As ever since its announcement, I've been reporting on virtually every stupid little detail of what is short for, well, <laughs> what is also brilliantly named the cute ute. Ute obviously being for short for utility, which is short for sport utility, and I would so very much like to give the person who came up with that a high five in the face <laughs> with a chair. And a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> or a shovel, you know, whatever you got <laughs> handy. <laughs> what we haven't heard until just recently, actually, was the U.S. release date for this yet another disgrace of an iconic Jeep name badge. The Renegade will be arriving in U.S. dealerships in volume unfortunately, by the end of March and will compete against such vehicles as Nissan Juke, Mazda CX-3, Kia Soul, Honda CRV, and the Chevy Trax, all vehicles which have such a lengthy off-road heritage. The front-wheel drive Renegade shifts into all-wheel drive when more traction is needed, with disconnecting all-wheel drive similar to the Jeep we all love to hate, the new Cherokee. The two powertrain options authorized for the U.S. market, because we aren't cool enough to get the diesels here in the States, both feature inline four-cylinder engines, a base 1.4-liter turbo, which makes about 160 horsepower, paired to a six-speed manual transmission, and an optional 2.4-liter that cranks out 180 horsepower, made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission. My question is, so why can't we get the higher horsepower in a stick? I think that's a good question, because uh, I believe it needs to be answered, and as soon as the Chrysler Fiat developers pull their respective heads out of their rear ends, well, we'll be sure to ask them. The Renegade's three main trim levels, Sport, Latitude, and Limited, all come standard with front-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is a $2,000 option. The top-end Trailhawk trim exceeds off, excels off-road with a whopping, ooh, get this, 8.7 inches of ground clearance. Uh, in retrospect here, people, the uh, Cherokee had a little bit more. Responsive electric steering and generous approach angles, departure and breakover angles, the Renegade Trailhawk trails only the two-door Wrangler in its capability off-road. That is, of course, only by the numbers on paper and not based in reality whatsoever. And, and certainly doesn't hold a candle to our XJs, which virtually beat the Renegade on almost every single category. The Trailhawk comes standard with an electronically disabled or electronically abled crawl ratio of 20 to 1, <laughs> enabling downhill all-wheel drive descents without the need for braking. Okay, wow, you got one semi-decent off-road feature to protect yourself from uh, going down a hill, because if you're one of the people who's buying one of these things, you're 
probably the type of person who would freak out and forget where the brake pedal is when going down even the slightest of declines. What I find interesting about all this off-road renegade talk is that there's no mention whatsoever of improved articulation over the excessively mediocre 8 inches of wheel articulation and even then only on the Trailhawk. On pavement, the Renegade's handling is supposedly responsive, thanks in part to rigid steel construction and a God, I hope this never fails, truly disconnected from the ground, drive-by-wire electronic steering system. Because steering columns are like so 1983. The Renegade has only been on sale in global markets since mid-December, and even then only in select European markets. Brazilian production is slated to ramp up later this year, and obviously it's too early to tell yet how this thing is even going to sell. What's plainly obvious is that Jeep is focusing their marketing on the off-road aspect of this vehicle, what is basically a Fiat 500L with bigger tires and a pseudo-transfer case. They're hanging their hats on this, folks, as the commercial marketing approach with the new Cherokee tried an off-road angle and, well, frankly, fell flat on his face. <laughs> That's why most of the Cherokee commercials you see now are primarily in cityscapes. Yeah, Does GM... I, I, go ahead, Tony. I was just going to say, uh, <laughs> I just don't understand why, they, why Jeep continues to try to sell us this crap. I mean, they know this isn't going to sell to the the off road audience. I mean, no, you know, not at least not not the the you know off road audience who's been around for a turn or two. So uh, I equate this to like what you're going to talk about in your next story, kind of like the the H one, which is a, a, a has a, a, a illustrious military uh, career and 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 many uh, desert storm operations and things in the Middle East, and it's a great off road vehicle. I mean, I'm sure that you could argue there's there's uh, good points and bad points, but uh, GM comes out with the H2. Why? Because the, the, all the H1s are on television. Everybody wants an H1, but nobody wants to spend eighty grand for right. uh, for a real off road vehicle. Uh, so they spent seventy five grand for an H2 <laughs> or whatever yeah. it cost. You know. So uh, I, I guess I guess they're just giving uh, the public what the majority, I should say, of the public what the public wants. Yeah, and uh, the public is definitely wanting some off-road goodies from uh, virtually any manufacturer. It just goes to show Jeep is putting out record sales numbers. GM is trying to step up to the plate recently, and they think they might have something up their sleeve to compete with the Wrangler. Personally, I think not. The Hummer could be making a comeback, Tony, in spirit at least. Reports are flooding the interwebs that General Motors is seriously considering adding a Jeep Wrangler fighting SUV to its GMC lineup. At the recent SEMA show, GM debuted its Colorado ZR2 concept, a jacked-up, diesel-powered mid-size pickup that looks less like a concept and more like ready for the showroom floor. It had integrated winch bumper, lots of undercarriage skid plates, and remote reservoir shocks. All pretty nice, actually. Its sole purpose was to gauge the public's interest, and actually there was plenty of it. It's so, it's, uh, the automaker has reportedly discussed the idea with dealers, telling them that such a vehicle would offer the kind of style and off-road capabilities that were hallmarks of the military-inspired Hummer brand. The company left one such vehicle on the table when it discontinued Hummer six years ago. The 2008 HX concept was a two-door 4x4 with a removable roof that looked a lot like a Wrangler on steroids, or so they would like to think. If you ask me, I thought it looked more like a half-drunk bloated warthog and was pretty much a shoe in for production as the H4. Had Hummer survived, that is, which of course it did not. Will Ford release a two-door Hummer-like off-roader in the coming years? Well, the idea is being kicked around real hard. However, General Motors may not be waiting around for an all-new model to enter the segment, especially with Jeep sales at an all-time high. Jeep moved over 175,300 Wranglers just last year alone. Ford has nothing in that class even close. Good luck, Ford, because the king of the off-road is not likely to give up his throne anytime soon. Long live Jeep. Hey guys, I want you guys to keep up the great work. You've been doing a really good job lately sending in these stories. I want you to keep sending in these news tips and stories. And big thanks to John Prerunner 1982 and Jake for submitting these stories. If you guys would like to submit a story to be aired on This Week in Jeep, or if you have any response to any one of our stories aired on This Week in Jeep, please give us a call or send us an email to newstips at xjtalkshow.com. xjtalk.com is where you go when you're not off-road. And now you can go to xjtalk.com when you're off-road too. Using your smartphone, install the Tap a Talk app, then search for XJ Talk. Take XJ Talk with you wherever you go. Jury duty, dinner with your spouse's parents, even, well, anywhere you need your XJ Talk fix. 
XJ Talk, XJ Talk, XJ Talk dot com. The XJ Talk Show is now available on iTunes. Subscribe and leave a review. Also, be sure to give us a five star rating. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial over at www.audibletrial.com slash xjtalkshow. Well, isn't that does peachy? So uh, you guys know us, uh, Tony and Josh, uh, Motoroy, and uh, Northwest 99 uh, XJ, who is, uh, as you can see in the video, busily talking to people in the chat room because we, yeah, have, I am a, indeed. we have a little little chat room that's uh, below our video. Uh, and uh, as, as I always say, every Thursday, or sometimes I say every Wednesday, but uh, it's every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central Time, go over there to uh, xjtalkshow.com and you can watch the video and uh, chat and crack wise in the, uh, in the chat room. And uh, so uh, do a quick shout out. We've got uh, Steve 4.3 LXJ. We've got Jeep Mama. Uh, there's Ron D. The Paps Boys are here. Uh, sober as always, I'm sure. And uh, James is here, unless I'm scrolling back to last week. <laughs> That's a bad thing about free software, Josh. You know, it, yeah. uh, <laughs> you don't never, you never know what you're going to get with free software. It, it works pretty good for uh, for most places. Anyway. Our um, podcast is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never uh, know what you're going to get. No, you don't. And do you have the courage to eat chocolate while uh, uh, sitting in the bathroom? I don't. Um, Ooh, good question. <laughs> it's, it's like, as long as you keep the hands straight, you know, left and right, left and right, left and right. So, uh, as I was saying, we're here every 10 p.m. Central Time uh, at uh, xjtalkshow.com. You can find us on uh, uh, Facebook at uh, xjtalk.page. You can find us on the Twitter. You kids, get off my yard and uh, find us on the Twitter at xjtalk. And uh, what else, Josh? Oh, boy. We've, we're just all over the place, really. Um, uh, just, I'm just oh, everywhere. Excellent. Pretty much type is, excellent. typing in something in the web, and we're going to be there. Excellent. So let's get some voicemails. Hey, this is Tony. And this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show. We want to thank you for calling our 24-7 voice line. Yes, we do. Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Hey, it's Jensen. I just want to know what your guys' uh, thoughts are on the uh, Keystone Pipeline. Oh. And uh, U.S. versus Canada, and what's happening uh, with getting us uh, going? Anyway, just thought I'd shoot that one out there. Oh yeah, they uh, the I saw that the uh, the Congress, uh, the Senate uh, passed the Keystone Pipeline bill today, the one that uh, President Obama has uh, promised to veto because he's real popular with the people, and he he likes to do things to make sure everybody's happy. Uh, well, actually, I think it's more along the lines of uh, he wants to keep everything clean, not so much everybody happy, but he wants to keep everybody clean, and uh, he knows better uh, than everybody else about uh, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's just so much political kowtowing, I think. And now that uh, he's lost control, the uh, Senate and the House, well, he's going to pretty much veto anything that comes across, regardless how well it's passed. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what he does. But uh, as far as my, it, it, it's my view on it is good. Let's put more people to work. Uh, obviously, uh, oil prices are, are way down right now, and uh, there are some people, <laughs> there are some people that uh, uh, are losing their jobs because the price of oil is so so far down. But I can almost promise you guys, oil is complaining gonna, here. Yeah, oil is going to come back, and uh, oh yeah, I would like to see it stabilize. Now, it would be nice if it if it stayed low for about four years because it was too high for about four years, and uh, you know, let's balance things out a bit. But uh, personally, I think we ought to get it uh, away from the speculators. Uh, the speculators. Oh yeah, have, no, absolutely. Have really caused I think uh, a horrible situation with uh, the the economy and everything else because. I mean, why should speculator, speculators be speculating what a barrel of oil is going to cost? A barrel of oil should cost what, it's, what somebody is willing to pay for it. Well, not only that, I always thought that um, regardless of what's going on in the industry or the Middle East or whatever, there should be a, a definite like $100 per barrel cap. Uh, and you can play all you want below that, but not allowed to go above it because, well, plain and simply, there's no real reason for it. 
Yeah, but you get back into that situation of capitalism versus uh, socialism. So when you start putting caps on things, you're going to kind of towards the socialist side of things. Let's let the free market decide what it's going to do. And that, of course, that's one of the reasons why of why we have such low prices now is uh, there's a glut and the prices are down. So. Anywho, before it gets to be in too big of a political discussion, yeah, let's uh, let's right. let's jump over to, to Nikki G as a a palate cleanser. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, just caught the show. And I want to say, uh, Chief Mama, you did you did a good job. It was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. Uh, a bit of irony, though, is if you're a soccer mommy, and you own a Jeep, and you use it off road, and I'm a big fat redneck. I own a Jeep, and I use it to get groceries. <laughs> so, uh, proof that the uh, Cosmic Universe does have a sense of humor. And i also like to congratulate Josh for ditching his laptop and going off the grid. <laughs> Welcome to my world, friend. Uh, your next step now is to go to Sam's Club and buy the big industrial-sized roll of tinfoil. Start you lining go. your windows, because uh, glass <laughs> doesn't block the radio waves. Uh, make sure it's uh, shiny side out, though. That you get the most reflective properties that way. Good tip. All mm. right, guys. I will uh, chat you later. You have a good one. Good day. <laughs> they got some well, nice things. They got some nice thick aluminum at uh, at Sam's. That uh, the heavy duty stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the commercial grade, which is uh, which is nice. Yeah, you can almost uh, repair a hole in your, in your Jeep with it. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you got a TIG welder, you can make yourself a radiator. <laughs> yeah. well let's uh let's get over to some youtube love oh i do like that youtube love guys and you've been doing a great job we are climbing over that two hundred thousand view mark quite rapidly and uh well i think we're uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 750 subscribers we're desperately trying to reach that 1000 mark so make sure you guys are telling a friend if you haven't subscribed head over to our youtube channel and make sure you guys do that right now it's youtube.com slash xj talk uh, we pick out four of our subscribers every week and just pay a little homage give them a little bit of shout out first on the list is hunksiger 71 and what's this david i got is that enoch very good tony i got nc240 coop in our number three spot oh and a simple one keith chase that's right guys and uh, no particular order here if you guys haven't heard your name and you subscribed recently well just sit tight we're adding names to the list all the time we'll get to you sooner or later yeah we've been getting a lot of subscribers and we really appreciate it thanks a lot guys wow we beat the music for a change i know for a change <laughs> hey folks i'm clyde and this is tommy from the pop spies or house you're listening to the xj talk show with tony and josh cheers you're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. <laughs> well, good stuff, Josh. That's I always I always get a kick out of that uh, little uh, little video drop. You know, I sent them an email asking for permission to uh, to use that, and they never responded. So we should be seeing the legal papers soon. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, the cease and desist letters are being scribbled as just, we speak. Just write me a check. I'll fill out the amount. That uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. I see after enough chastising, you don't start talking to me before I get out of the Jeep. I just want to congratulate you on, on paying attention, Josh. That's great. Oh, are you here? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that disembodied voice talking? <laughs> <laughs> yes, mama. I hear you. <laughs> so uh, anything good going on, Josh? Have you actually gotten out uh, of the garage and, and done anything to your Jeep? Well, not so much to the Jeep. I've been busy on uh, on everybody else's vehicles lately. Uh, I've been doing a, a lot of work on other people's rigs. So, uh, but I have worked on the garage itself. Ah, I, uh, yeah. I I, uh, I got a a hundred dollar gift certificate or gift card rather for Christmas to Lowe's, and uh, my intentions were originally to buy one of those new um, impact guns. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a drill gun, but it's a little impact driver, and uh, they come in very handy for for working on the Jeep. And I figured uh, I've used one in the past. Uh, over at a buddy's house working on uh, working on jeeps um and i was like man this thing is really cool it's lightweight it's uh gets into those tight spaces and it's very powerful you we'll have to give me one of these really speeds and, up the uh, job yeah absolutely power tools always make things go great so um uh, you know i was kind of sitting around doing my research and and uh, a buddy of mine another jeeper 
he uh, was mentioning that he built himself a new workbench. And I was like, you know, a new workbench? Geez, the one you had was you know, built like a tank. What are you doing with it? And, uh, and he said, well, this guy on Craigslist said he was going to buy it, but he's kind of, you know, flaking on me. And then I was like, well, you know, if uh, you give him some time and, and he doesn't come through, then, you know, hey, give me first dibs on it. And, uh, and he's like, all right. And, and so we worked out a deal to where I trade him the gift card for the workbench. Now, this thing has got four by 10 or four by 12 stringers on it. It's made all with four by fours and the top is all like two by eights or two by tens or something like that. I mean, this thing is literally built like a tank. I mean, it is, it is just absolutely indestructible. Uh, minus a gigantic fire, of course, because it is all made out of wood. Um, but he's got a picture of a, uh, of, a, of a large V8 sitting on top of it. I mean, this thing can definitely handle some weight. It is the last workbench I will ever need. And I've been using one of those like, you know, steel and particle board shelving units from, from Home Depot um, that kind of break down and you can put them side by side. And, and that's been my workbench for the last five or six years or so. And, uh, and it works okay. You know, it's, it, it, I could never really bash on anything really hard. I couldn't do any hammering on it. Um, mounting a vice to it was really sketchy. So, you know, I, I've been wanting to upgrade it for quite a long time and uh, borrowed a buddy's big old diesel truck and went and picked this thing up, made the deal, got it home and, uh, and proceeded to tear my garage clean apart. And that's exactly what I did. I literally took everything off the one wall, um, put it all in the middle of the garage, ended up having a, a lot more garbage than I thought I was going to, uh, and then rearranged everything, uh, took the what was my workbench and then reassembled it as a shelving unit. And got myself a lot more storage space. Uh, so the garage is uh, in better shape than it ever has been before. And uh, and I love the new workbench. It is absolutely awesome. It's nice and tall. It's deep. It's strong. And, uh, and man, I could not be happier. So um, it's going to give me a great platform to, um, to, to, do my, uh, to do my transfer case rebuild here coming up very soon. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what I have scheduled in the very near future as far as what I want to get done. Um, now the, the Jeep is running and driving just fine. And, and I, I, I could take it off road. I just definitely wouldn't want to do any rock crawling with it. It's, it's, um, not what I would call trail reliable, at least for that kind of wheeling that I do. So it's going to go into hiatus for a while. I've been telling you guys about this for, for a little bit now, but, uh, um, I've got some work on some other vehicles that I need to do here, um, coming up just cause I promised some people, um, that I, you know, I'm going to help them out with some, uh, some audio work and some alarm installs and stuff like that. So, um, that's coming up here real soon. Um, I've got a, uh, a little bit of a Jeep thing coming up here in, in late February that I may try and have the Jeep ready for, but man, my, I've got such a laundry list of stuff to do. And honestly, it's very overwhelming. All the stuff that I really need to do, everything from exhaust um, a leak uh, fixes, the, the, the header leak that I need to take care of, um, some wiring, um, shock install, armor install, long arm upgrade. I mean, there the list goes on and on and on. And, uh, and it's just, it's one of those, well, I'm getting at the point ask you now this. where, what do you yeah, need to please. do? What do you need to do to feel confident about going off road? That's the, that's the way narrow down your list to what is the yeah. one or two things that you need to do. Not, you don't need long arm, a long arm upgrade to go off road. It's nice, but you don't need it. Now, maybe it's rebuilding the, the transfer case you need to do. Yeah, that's, that's, well, I'd really like to take care of that, uh, that exhaust leak before I do anything else. It's, you know, it's other than the headache, it's pretty, pretty enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as you don't go to sleep permanently. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I got to take the top end of the engine off, you know, the, the intake manifold and the, uh, um, you know, the fuel rail and all that stuff to get down to the, uh, to get down to the, the exhaust manifold and, and, you know, deal with that. I've done it before. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's just time consuming. And, and I'm in the, I'm in the, the, this point now, and I've, I've talked about this before on the XJ talk show that, that I'm, I'm in one of these phases where I've just, I've lost my motivation I know and it's, mean. maybe it's a seasonal thing. I don't know. It's, it's, well, you're it's always, just one of these you're always working on the damn Jeep. I just want to play. Why do I have to work on the Jeep all <laughs> the time? <laughs> It's not quite that bad, but uh, it's it's just you know I've got I've got such a long list um, of, of stuff that I need to do that it, it's like you know where to start, and that's good advice, Tony. I mean I have prioritized things, but I'm one of those guys where it's like, well, I don't want to just nitpick. I want to get it all done. I want to do it all at once. Well, that's where so, your problem is. That's why you're having yeah. such a hard time. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's so like that, it's like I learned in programming years ago. If you look at the project as a whole. You look at all the time, all the effort that you're going to have to put into it, it's going to be overwhelming and you're not going to be able to do it. But just take it one module at a time 
and boom, 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 boom. Pretty soon, pretty soon you're done, and you go, oh, my God, that wasn't hard at all. So I know exactly what you're talking about as far as getting motivated. I was I was really happy I got out there and did some work uh, last weekend on mine. So uh, believe me, I know. I've, I was I actually, I was reviewing uh, past shows because of your post today on XG Talk. I was trying to find those uh, those episodes that you were referring to in your post. Ah, yes. And uh, I saw a reference to my onboard air system from 2011. Oh yeah, that's 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 a that's a kind of a so don't feel topic. bad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's and that, that's another thing. Is I've I've got I've got a couple compressors sitting out there. Um, I, I don't have a tank. Onboard air has been one of those things that I've uh, you know I've been threatening to do for for quite a while. There's a bunch of interior mods that I'd like to do, uh, but until I get a either a trailer or another vehicle uh, to transport my DJ gear. I can't really mess with the inside of the Jeep oh, right yeah. now. So, you know, doing like a, you know, a cargo build out, um, racks on the inside or anything like that. An air oh, tank around. Or, yeah, you wouldn't be able to fit yeah, everything in and, there. It barely fits now. And, <laughs> it, it really does. It's like a game of Tetris trying to fit all my equipment in for any given gig. So it's... Uh, yeah, well, that it's, explains the music that you play. on the back burner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, so, yeah, uh, so that's about what's going on in in, in my Jeep world. Um, yeah, you know, I've I've, uh, I, I've got a, a well, not a, I've got another list of uh, of other vehicles that I have to work on as well. I've got a, a buddy that's got a a clunk. Actually, I think he might be in the chat room right now. It's ninety two War Wagon. Uh, we actually shared a cigar uh, earlier this evening, and we're uh, just kind of uh, BSing around the campfire, as it were, kind of like we're doing right now. And and uh, we're talking Jeep for a little while. He's got a he's got a clunk that I kind of diagnosed to. Potentially a control arm bushing, which uh-huh. I know you're all too familiar with, yes. uh, Tony. So uh, I'm going to diagnose that for him, hopefully on Saturday as well, and get him taken care of, or at least pointed in the right direction uh, here very soon. And uh, I have another alarm installed to do on a, on a buddy's uh, new commuter, his new daily driver uh, vehicle. So that's uh, going to take up my Saturday. And, well, Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, and then back to the grind on Monday. So maybe, just maybe... Uh, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend, I will get a chance to work on my own rig. Well, I'm just going to mention this. I'm just going to throw it out there. Everybody's yeah. going to be, be, be busy Sunday. They're not going to come by and bother you at all. That'd be a great <laughs> day to work on stuff, Josh. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I've got plans. I've got, I got a couple people coming yeah, over to uh, to watch the game and stuff. And I've got people, uh, other people oh, you know, this is trying perfect. to get me to come over. and Set the TV up in the garage and say, thanks oh, for coming yeah. by, guys. Here, you, you want some hot wings? <laughs> Grab a wrench. <laughs> It's a trap. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll, I'll mention this real quick. I did get out and uh, do some work on uh, on my Jeep this past weekend. I was uh, real proud of myself. I did wait until the last minute Sunday uh, to get out there and do it, but it was uh, it was before oh, noon. That's always risky. That's yeah, always risky because yeah, if something goes wrong, you break a bolt well, or something like that. Yeah, I, I kept it simple. I went out there with the idea of replacing the upper control arm bushings uh, on the Dana Thirty with the Rubicon Express. Uh, I think they're builder parts where you, it's a bushing. Oh, okay. uh, actually, Matt at Bleeping Jeep has a video on this. And uh, another Matt, oh, yeah. this is just to be confusing, Matt Sporenberg actually did this to his Jeep and how they recommended it. So I, I, I bought a pair of these things and I was going to press out those uh, those upper control arm bushings off of uh, the, uh, the axle side and uh, replace both bushings, if you will, on that upper control arm, uh, at least on one side. And I got out there and I thought, you know, I'm just going to keep this thing simple. So I just replaced the bushing, uh, the bad bushing on the upper control arm body side. And uh, it mm-hmm. made a huge difference. I, I, I posted some pictures up on uh, uh, xjtalk.com, the uh, uh, number one Jeep forum, uh, at least in my mind, uh, on the internet. And uh, the uh, the bushing was very bad. And it's amazing how much better it drives now. <laughs> It's, uh, oh, it, is that right? It doesn't want to uh, to track along with the expansion joints and in, uh, in the road or any little dips in the road, which it it kind of had a mind of its own. I mean, it wasn't so bad that you would it would be dangerous, but uh, when uh, mm-hmm. we were replacing the engine and Matt took it for that twenty mile drive, he says, "Man, you got to do something about the with those bushings because <laughs> oh, it was bothering him. He's not used to that." So uh, I've replaced the one, but and then uh, after that, I went ahead and replaced the uh, the. Uh, um, license plate mount on the front i had made my own license plate mount that uh, clips to the uh the fair lead on the winch uh and and i used the uh, maglite uh, uh flashlight holder brackets which are just plastic 
And what's uh, the what's the average uh, price point on those brackets? Just for those out there who uh, have been toying around with the idea of doing something similar. Well, at Amazon.com, uh, it would be no, I, I don't recall. I, it was less than mm. twenty bucks. It seems like it was around seven or eight bucks. I think. Now, okay. one person had had posted on the XG Talk. Those aren't going to last very long because they're plastic. Well, oh, they lasted okay. for years. And the only reason wow. why I replaced them was, well, you, I don't know if you remember that big toolbox, rolling toolbox that I got for 200 bucks off of Woot. Yeah, well, yeah I remember that. It, I measured it, and it doesn't quite fit in front of the Jeep. So every time I pull in, the license plate pushes up against it. It's like a half inch <laughs> too close. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, so me pulling up really slow to that toolbox had damaged one of those little plastic clips. Oh, I see. So that's why I replaced it. And I, and I just got one of the Smitty built uh, ones that are made to, to go on there and and uh, uh, just transfer it over the license plate. And I went ahead and put another cable on there that uh, retains the, the whole license plate and everything to the bumper. So in case I take it off and I forget to put it back on after winching, then uh, it's going to stay there mm-hmm. with me and not I don't have to drive an hour back to the park and try to find it. Uh, Very good. So uh, then I went to the back and replaced the uh, license plate mount that I had on my rear tire spare, pulled that one off and used a piece of flat strap and extended uh, the license plate mount that's right behind, you know, right in the center of the um, of the uh, the hatch. I extended yeah. that over so that the license plate would be, uh, you know, offset and not behind the spare tire and got a, man, the thing is bright, LED light that's made to go on the top of the license plate oh, and, okay, yeah. and, and it is it's well it is very bright and uh, it probably <laughs> will keep people from riding my tail just simply because the license plate is so white and bright now anyway so uh, so i gotcha. got three things accomplished uh, i still have more things to do obviously and uh some more things to do to the uh to, to the suspension uh, but uh, getting closer, getting a lot closer, and uh, I, I know, like I said, exactly what you mean as far as uh, not wanting to get out there, but I guarantee you, uh, at least down here, it's a lot better to work on it now than it will be in, uh, uh, well, probably even May. It's gonna when it's gonna be getting really start to get bad outside. Yeah, I was Heat-wise. gonna say maybe down there. You were hitting eighty degrees in uh, in January. Uh, we we had a uh, sixty degree day the other day, and that was a uh, pretty <laughs> well really unusual for a January here in the Northwest. It's Detours Off Road Hardware, fabricating for the off road community for over fifteen years. Winch mounts, armor, tire carries, and so much more. All made right here in the USA. All original designs, always innovating, never Im- Im- imitating. Got custom? Well, they've got you covered. As always, Detours welcomes the challenge of your custom projects. True custom work is a one-off fabrication. Big or small, they're proud to be able to get their hands dirty doing it. Think you think you're too far away for them to help you directly with your project? Detours welcomes both local and long-distance projects. So give them a call or email a photo or even a sketch, and they'll see what Detours Off-Road Hardware can do for your project. Meanwhile, take a look at their gallery of custom projects they've helped others with and check out the complete line of projects for your vehicle at DetoursUSA.com or call them direct. Guys, here's the number 605-845-0024. Discuss your project needs at 606-845-0024. That's all you need, guys. DetoursUSA.com. And now it's time for some radio com tech. Roger that. Another warrior is on the mesa. This is John, pre runner 1982, and today I'm going to tell you what the knobs and switches on the front of your CB radio do and how to properly adjust them. Now, if you have a compact radio, like a Cobra 19 or a unit in Pro 505 or 520, you're only going to have a few knobs and switches. They're pretty basic radios. But if you have a Cobra 25 or Cobra 29, one of the larger radios, there are quite a few more knobs and switches on there. So we're going to go over those today. First knob, generally on the far left, is your on-off and volume. Uh, That's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to leave that one up to you. The next knob is usually the squelch knob, and what this does is it sets a signal strength that a transmitting station has to have in order for your radio to basically acknowledge it and allow you to listen. So with your radio on, what you're going to want to do is turn the squelch knob all the way to the left or counterclockwise, and then slowly turn it clockwise until all that staticky noise goes away, and that's where you're going to want to set it. Now, you may uh, encounter areas where there'll be RFI or interference from outside sources 
they're going to break your squelch. So as you're driving around, if you have your radio on all the time, it may require some tuning as you pass through certain areas. And this is generally um, interference from power lines that have uh, bad isolators commonly uh, an issue with ham radio as well. Uh, I have encountered it on my uh, daily drive as a matter of fact. You may also have a dyno mic knob and what this does is it controls the sensitivity of the microphone's audio level. So you're going to turn it clockwise to the maximum voice volume and then you can always reduce the dyno mic if necessary. Now you may also have an ANL and MB switch. ANL stands for automatic noise limiter and MB means noise blanker. What this switch does is it blocks out the noise interference caused by electronics in your vehicle, such as your ignition. So if you're having that type of an issue, uh, turning the switch on would come in handy. Now another knob is called RF gain, or sometimes just called gain. And what this knob does is it helps reduce very strong signals that are nearby. They can uh, overload your receive. So that uh, you can adjust that as needed depending on how strong nearby signals are. If there aren't any, you can turn it all the way down so it'll help you receive um, more distant wheat signals. Now if you have a single sideband radio, you may also have a knob called a delta tune. And what this knob does is it helps you really zero in on that station or, or that uh, signal that you're trying to communicate with because in single sideband, uh, the frequency does drift a little bit, so the Delta Tune helps eliminate that drift and really zero in on that particular individual or signal you're trying to uh, trying to work with. Now you may also have a channel 19 slash 9 button, and what that does is it uh, is a quick way to switch from channel 19 to channel 9. Now with my Cobra 19, say if I have it set to channel 4, which is what my local club uses, I can push the button once and it'll change to channel 9, push it again and it'll change to channel 19. And if I push it a third time, it actually will go back to my original channel 4. It does come in handy, especially if you want to monitor the channel your group runs and channel 19. The larger radios may also have an SWR switch on them, but I'll get into that more later in a different episode. I think that's really all for the knobs and switches. It's really not that difficult once you understand what each knob does. So until next time, avoid those pickle parks with the sleeper leapers. Watch out for gators or you'll need a dragon wagon. And keep an eye on your back door so you don't feed the bears. This is John, pre-runner 1982, and I'll catch you on the flip-flop. I really thought that back door was going a different direction. Uh, oh, man, what a sign-off. <laughs> Great job, John. Great job indeed. Now I will I want to jump in and uh, and uh, not not a correction but add something. Um, what John was saying is, is probably a hundred percent true on on CBs sideband radios probably would have a tendency to drift, but that's only because they're cheap. <laughs> Even if you pay three hundred dollars for your CB sideband radio, it's still cheap in comparison to some of the other uh, like ham radios that are out there. And the reason why you have to adjust that is because. Uh, the, the, the person uh, transmitting or your radio is drifting as temperatures change and the components uh, don't have uh, high tolerances. So it's, it's change in frequency and it's a very narrow band communication. So that's why you notice it moving. If you get mm. a, uh, a radio that has higher uh, tolerant components and uh, et cetera, et cetera, there's even uh, crystal stability uh, modules that you can put in, in various radios to keep it dead on frequency and sounds uh, expensive to me well i mean you know you can always buy used uh, like uh, an icom 706 mark ii uh, model g uh, i picked up one for 500 bucks so if you're spending 300 dollars on a cb or even 200 dollars on a cb double the price and you get a much better radio now of course you're not supposed to use that on the cb bands uh, people do but you're not supposed to so anyway that's uh one of the things he was talking about as far as the drift goes uh that happens and uh, uh years ago swan was uh, called the drift master uh, uh 2000 because <laughs> it would move around you'd have to follow people around on the band as you were talking to them how hey, are you on a swan yeah how'd you know that that's okay never mind <laughs> oh, see the drift master 2000 is usually the name that i have when i'm driving the honda in the rain there you go yeah, you still got the Honda? I was wondering about that. I do. It's still in my possession, and it hasn't left my possession since the last time. So That's amazing. <laughs> well, apparently, you're you're paid in full with karma. Ah, uh, yes. So, guys, we got some reviews here. Uh, now, I may have already read this one, but uh, what the hell? You probably uh, haven't heard it, or if you did, you should hear it again, damn it. So, uh, Northern Jeep uh, 
way back on January 21st, which is like a week ago, uh, says, great show, and gave us five stars. This is the first podcast I've listened to, and I'm hooked. <laughs> I've, I'm going back and downloading past podcasts and the 4x4 podcast. I even Great. subscribed. Yeah, I even subscribed to your YouTube channel. And and if you guys don't recall, uh, we actually formed this uh, this network called the Four by Four Radio Network. And uh, uh, the Four by Four Podcast is uh, is also a member of that. And uh, we're hoping to bring in more Four by Four shows here very very soon. You should go over to Four by Four Radio Network dot com and check out that website. Yep, yep. It's a work in progress, guys, and we'll be, of course, announcing as things progress and uh, let you know all the latest as far as what's developing with that. So please stay tuned. We got another review here from, I'm going to butcher this, so I deeply apologize. It's RD Sororiers or something along those lines. Yeah, I'm sorry. He says, I don't even own an XJ, (laughs) but he gave us a (laughs) five-star rating nonetheless. Guys, I freaked a while back when I thought you were going off the air. I do own a TJ and subscribe to your web forums. And even though I listen to other subjects via podcast on my phone, you guys are the best. It's like listening to my best friends. I felt an obligation to finally write a review and help even in the smallest way to your show. To keep it going. Big thanks uh, to you who I have butchered your name so severely. I apologize. Um, if you'd like to call in and well teach me how to say that name <laughs> properly very much appreciate a voicemail for that but we definitely thank you for that review yeah we we went way back in time for that one that was uh, back on september 29th of uh, 2013 that was and here and i don't ago. even remember i don't remember that one either so that's usually I'm, I'm pretty good about remembering reviews and i just don't remember that name so uh that's that's one that has uh, slipped through the cracks as it were at least as far as as i'm concerned guys if you have left a review and you haven't heard it well you need to crack the whip and let us know and be like hey i left you one back in 2012 <laughs> And well, we'll definitely get to it. But uh, if you haven't left a review, guys, please head over to iTunes and uh, you can find us over there. Uh, iTunes.com slash XJ talk. I'm guessing is what the link would somewhat look like. Anyways, a quick search would help you out there and leave us a five star review. And of course, um, leave us a uh, one of these little um, uh, reviews and comments, if you will. And we love the comments, even if it's constructive criticism. You got something to say about, man, I could just cannot stand Josh's deep, you know, whiny voice. Always complaining about this or that. Please let us know if you got something to say about the show. We want to hear it good or bad. Why won't Josh wear an XJ talk hat, for example? That would be a good one. <laughs> that's that's a, that is a good one. Yeah, I will have to have to address that issue in upcoming episodes. Uh, I tried to send him a hat, guys. I'm not re- I'm not really a hat person. Then he wore that beanie, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And how's that supposed yeah. to make me feel? You know, I tried oh. to give him a free hat. He's wearing a beanie. It says Jeep. <laughs> that's good enough. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So. <laughs> Let's get over to our uh, our main attraction here, uh, Tammy, a Jeep Mama, episode six of uh, Wrangler Talk. Hey, thanks, Tony and Josh. I had a real great time last week co-hosting with Tony. Hey, and Josh, I hope you got the bugs fixed on your laptop. So tonight I'm going to talk about my Rubicon and some buttons that are in my Rubicon that I like to use and some that I'm still trying to figure out how to use or what they're for. The first is the hill descent control button, which was on my Sahara, and I used it on my Sahara a couple times, and I've used it once in the Rubicon. And basically this button is used when you are on top of a hill, a very steep hill that's rocky or icy. And when you push the button, you let your foot off the gas and off the brake, and you let the Jeep do the driving down the hill. Now, this is a good time to use this when you're a newbie jeeper going down a hill. It kind of gives you the feel of how you're supposed to go down the hill. Some people call it cheating, but I think it's a good way to get to know your jeep and how you are supposed to go down hills. So the next two buttons I'm going to talk about, I call my magic buttons. My husband likes to call them the $7,000 buttons. Now, these buttons were not on my Sahara. They're not on the Sport. And I don't believe, I could be wrong, they're on any other Jeep. Anyway, it's the sway bar and the X-lock button. The sway bar button I have used twice now. And basically, it's the sway bar disconnect button. So when I'm in four low, I push the button and it disconnects my sway bar. And most of you know that sway bar disconnect allows for articulation when you're rock crawling. 
It also allows for both wheels to stay connected to the terrain. As you noticed in my first off-roading experience, I didn't have this luxury of disconnecting my sway bars and one of my tires went up a little too high and came crashing down and it was very heart-stopping for me. And right then I knew I've got to get the sway bar disconnect. The next button is the axle lock button. I totally get what locking the axles does. I understand the difference between open differential and lock differential, but my question is, when do you use this? Okay, so when I got back from my first time off-roading, somebody questioned me why I didn't use the axle lock button the whole time, and I'm like, well, because I didn't need to. They said, oh no, you're supposed to use it the whole time, and I was like questioning what I was taught and how what I understood of how these worked. So, you know, I've done some research and I posted it on question online and it seems like it's kind of split. Some people say, yeah, you have to have your axle lock. You push that button the whole time and there's others like, no, you know, you could do some damage. My understanding is that you use it for climbing over tough obstacles or when you're in a situation where you may need extra traction to keep you from getting stuck. Now I understand that all the tires will spin at the same rate, and this is to help you, to keep you from getting stuck. So I'm still questioning that, but I believe that I know that I'm right, that I shouldn't use them unless I absolutely need it, because I don't want to damage my axles or my drivetrain over using something that you really don't need. So the next button is the electronic stability control. And the electronic stability control senses when you begin to over or under steer and applies individual brakes and controls your throttle as needed to help put you back on track. And some people call it the electronic stability program. And it's a computerized technology that improves the vehicle's stability by detecting and reducing loss of traction. When ESC detects a loss of steering control, it automatically applies the brake to help steer the vehicle where the driver intends to go. Now my question is, when would I need this and does pushing this button stop this type of control or does it engage this type of control? So anyway, that's kind of what I'm looking into now. Hopefully I'll find the answers and I'll know what to do with this button. So in the meantime, I just don't touch it because everything's going fine now. And if I touch this button, who knows, maybe it'll turn my Rubicon back into um, a Sahara. That would be horrible. So that's my story about the four buttons in my Rubicon. And I'll still be looking into the ESC button. In the meantime, don't forget to check me out on www.jeepmama.com. I'm also on Instagram at jeep underscore mama. I'm on Twitter at Mama Jeep, and the Mama is M-O-M-M-A. I have YouTube videos, the Jeep Mama, on the Jeep Mama channel. I'm also on Facebook as Jeep Mama, and don't forget to check out my blog. Again, it's www.jeepmama.com. Anyway, thanks, Tony and Josh, and I'll see you all in the chat room. See, I'm starting to sense a, sense a theme uh, with the Jeep Mama thing. And, and who's the bastard that got Jeep Mama on Twitter? I mean, come on. Oh, I know, How right? How dare they? And not going to give it up either. That's, that's too bad. I wonder if she's actually uh, contacted them. She should say, hey, look at, all this, look at all this stuff I got. Oh, no, you don't want to do that because then they'll want money. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, just, you know, give them a $20 Amazon card or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I won't come over and rut your yard. Uh, that, that yeah, would, right. That would be the uh, the way to do it. Of course, you never can't tell. That could be anywhere in the world. Hey, Tony, do we have enough time to to, to do a little bit of locker talk? Yes, please. So I just kind of very quickly wanted to sort of address uh, some of Tammy's concerns and, and questions about, you know, when and, and how to use lockers and stuff. And and she kind of did, did her research and stuff and, and, and was talking about there's basically two camps, those who say, you know, use it all the time and those who say you should never really use it unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. Me, myself, I'm kind of in the middle. Like I'm, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a wheeling expert, but I do consider myself a veteran wheeler. Um, I've wheeled several different kinds of rigs and I've been on all kinds of different terrain and I wheel with all kinds of vehicles uh, and all kinds of drivers as well. And, and really, it really comes down to your own particular driving style and of course, uh, the kind of terrain that you're in. Now, obviously you don't wanna use lockers on anything like cement. Um, and even like a gravel road, obviously you don't need to use your locker then. 
Um, but generally, you know, general light wheeling and stuff. And I'm not talking about what it takes to go from one trail to the next. I'm talking about when you're actually on the trail. Now, I wheel with guys, you'll eat with the, they use the ARBs a lot. And you're going to hear those solenoids depressurizing quite a bit. And especially the front locker. Um, and, and really the front locker is going to be the one that's going to be used on and off the most because when that v, when that locker is engaged, you're going to find it's a little bit harder to turn through a corner with those, both those front wheels engaged. And so sometimes you, you know, you might need them to, to bump yourself over an obstacle or something and then quickly disconnect them so you can make the turn and navigate around a tree or another obstacle or something like that. It really comes down to personal preference. These things are meant, they're designed to take abuse. We're talking about locking up differentials and, and the kind of torque that is applied across the axle shafts into the differential with larger tires. These things are designed to take a little bit of abuse. They're designed to be turned on and off. Now, obviously, you don't want to well, sit there and the, the, did, 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 yeah. you know, sit the there locker, and the button. The locker itself may be designed to take the abuse, but you're going to be, well, you know, you always find the weakest link when you start uh, using these things. So it's always a possibility that you're going to break something else in the process. Now, she's, she's dealing with a complete system from the factory. Mm-hmm. So, it's, That's right. so the engineers took things into account. doesn't mean you're not going to break it. It just means it's, it's, it's all designed to work together. That's right. Exactly. So, and, yeah, go ahead. And, and, and it's, just, it's, it's when you start finding that weak link is when you start um, relying on it more than your own driving skills. There's, there comes a point where, where you kind of get a little overcome. You get too comfortable with the vehicle's capabilities and your own driving capabilities are, are, are not matched by the vehicle's capabilities. And that's when you start finding those weaker links a little bit more often than you, than you probably should. And, and, and lockers especially, when you, when you start locking up um, the, the differentials and the, and the axles are, are spinning, you get into a binding issue if, you're, if you haven't picked the right line or you find yourself sliding off of something in, in, a, in a precarious position. And this is when the damage starts to happen. It's, you kind of start getting freaked out. Like, the adrenaline starts panicking. happening. <laughs> yeah, and you start thinking with a different part of your brain. You start using you know, the fight or flight uh, response right. versus the frontal cortex and, and really thinking about you know, where I am and what I should be doing. And you're thinking about just getting out of that situation uh, because you're not in a comfortable situation. Maybe you're too off camber or something like that. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, Tammy, you know, personal preference, you know, you're, you're going to eventually learn how to use it um, the way that you feel comfortable with it. Uh, and other people's opinions, I mean, use them as, as guidance, not as a rule. Well, I, I think I'd just add that in that video that she had, there was a, 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 a section there where she was trying, just, they weren't major rocks, at least didn't appear to be major rocks, and she was trying to get up and over them. And um, now she may have been actually bumping up underneath the the uh, the. the differential or something that might have been why she was backing up but that might have been a good time to engage the um the lockers to actually allow you to get the traction to get up and over the rock that you were uh trying to get up on uh up and over i'm, I'm battling some audio issues here guys so i'm uh, having a little trouble talking and working the knobs at the same time but yeah i mean that's uh... Uh, again, it's just, you know, especially the, the kind of terrain. If you're on slick rock and stuff like that, you're going to want that traction. You're obviously going to want to be aired down. You're going to want to very, you know, very much pay attention to either your spotter or your line, you know, paying attention to what the vehicle in front of you is doing unless you're running point and, and watch how, where their wheels are and when what they're doing and, and how the vehicle is reacting. Obviously, if you see them sliding off of a rock, maybe you want to try a different, different line uh, and such. But don't be afraid of the lockers. They are there to help you. Yep, yep. So let's get over to uh, our Amazon You Bought What, and I'm going to beat this audio equipment while, uh, while we're doing it. Amazon.com and the XZ Talk Show present You Bought What? Guys, this is our, well, one of our favorite segments of the show. We do this every other week, and this is our Amazon You Bought What. And how this works is we have a great relationship set up with Amazon.com. If you don't know what Amazon.com is, well, it is basically the largest shopping mall on the web, if you will. You can pretty much buy virtually anything on Amazon.com. And how this works is all you guys have to do is head over to xjtalk.com or xjtalkshow.com. You're going to see an Amazon banner right there on the main page. Please click on that when you're doing any online shopping. It's going to take you to Amazon.com where you're going to have the largest selection and the best prices of virtually anything that you can imagine. 
And we ask you guys to, to do that. It's a great way to support the XJ Talk Show. It's a great way to support XJTalk.com. It helps keep the lights on. It helps us keep bringing you guys great content. And of course, we get a small, tiny little kickback from each and every purchase. Now, you guys aren't going to pay a dime more. Not a single red cent is marked up on that price. Great way to stick it to the man, wouldn't you think? We get a little kickback from that. You know, you guys get a great deal on some great products as well. And we get a list of what has been purchased. Now, we don't see who's buying what. And this is where some of the fun comes in. Because we've asked you guys to throw us a curveball every now and again. Find something rather off the wall that you might think that we might have a hard time talking about. And you're going to see how this works out tonight. Yep, yep. And uh, I'll just go ahead and start here with, uh, and this is a past one we did, but still a goodie. Alloy USA Differential Permanent Cable Lock Kit. So this is a, uh, of course, it's a Alloy USA, so it's got to be good, right? It's a trusted industry leader backed by a manufacturer's warranty. Great performance and enhance your vehicle. So is this for the, the, the disconnect, Josh? Is this for the, uh, the, dis, the uh, Dana 30 disconnects, I believe? That's exactly what that is. Some of the Dana 30s, especially on the older, uh, like the YJs and some of the earlier XJs, they had a uh, essentially like a three-piece axle. Um, the, the passenger side axle is, 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 uh, has a disconnect in it. And, uh, and so when you put it into four-wheel drive, this actually connects the front axle um, and uh, those two pieces together. Now, what this this intent is to do is to remove all that vacuum actuator stuff and and really help strengthen up that vacuum disconnect Dana 30. Get you a little plate in there and, and a little, uh, um, you know, it basically permanently connects those two pieces together. You guys want this. If you have an early model Dana 30 for less than 50 bucks, you guys can get this. It's going to definitely be an upgrade uh, versus doing something like an axle swap to a high pinion Dana 30. Now, I've got one here. This is uh, the V-Gate Bluetooth Scan Tool, OBD2 uh, scanner for the Torque app. Android, this thing is less than $10 and comes with free shipping. Works with all OBD2 compliant vehicles. That's pretty much anything after uh, manufactured after 96. Um, it reads diagnostic trouble codes with both generic and manufacturer specific and displays their meaning. Over 3,000 generic code definitions are in the database. It comes with it. You can clear trouble codes with it. You can turn off the, the MIL or the check engine light. Uh, you can even impress your friends with this. It comes with all sorts of really cool stats you can display on your smartphone. Uh, make sure you buy from this because, uh, well, there are some other imitations out there. Guys, we're going to uh, throw up that link for you over at xjtalkshow.com slash Amazon. You guys can see all the products that we talk about here. This thing is super compact. Uh, and it works with the Torque Android app, which I think they have a free version. But if you want the big fat Cadillac Daddy version, uh, it's only like four ninety nine, and comes with all the bells and whistles. Oh wow! I thought it was like two bucks, but I haven't bought it. I, I bought it a while back, so maybe I did spend that much for it. So uh, this is a pretty cool thing. We all like the Hayes manuals. Well, when I say we all do, I never did because it never had the information that I really needed. <laughs> but uh, somebody went over to yeah. Amazon and uh, bought the Kawasaki uh triple owners workshop manual and uh, this is for the kawasaki 250 350 and 400 triplets owners so uh somebody's doing some work on their motorcycle josh mm, and somebody's doing some work on their communication system we have a rectangular external communication speaker for ham radio cb and scanners this is a great sounding compact communications external speaker because oftentimes the speakers that come with the units oftentimes they're built in yeah, they're kind of tinny and they're kind of hard to hear, especially if you have it mounted kind of in a spot that's out of the way. Chances are you're going to be losing a lot of the volume coming out of that unit. This thing's only about four and a half by about two and a half by two and a half uh, uh, inches wide. It is rectangular. It's eight ohm resistance on that. So pretty much will work with virtually any radio. It includes the mounting bracket and of course the hardware. Great for CB radios, amateur radios, two-way, and even police scanners. And includes a cord with a standard 3.5 millimeter plug. And that's like the little mini uh, headphone jack. Uh, guys, if uh, you have a CB and you're kind of hard to hear on the trail, especially like on the gravel roads and stuff, this thing is going to be a great addition. I've got something very similar to this. And man, it is one of the greatest mods or upgrades I've done to my CB system. Well, that speaker's never mounted in the right place on the uh, on the CB anyway to be able to hear clearly. So... Uh, it's always a good idea to to get a, a, a an extra speaker like this so that you can actually uh, hear things clearer. So always a great thing and something else that you can get uh, on uh, Amazon.com. We just found out what you bought. Oh my God, I just can't believe that made it on the list. Well, that's a show, and uh, I'd say just in time with this uh, audio screwing up on me, Josh. 
Yeah, I'm saying you're, you're getting worse by the minute here. I uh, must have, uh, well, whatever I had must have been contagious. It uh, went your way, guys. So a lot of show, guys. Going to have to cut a little bit short tonight. Tony's having some issues. Next week, guys, we promise we're going to give you all sorts of uh, good stuff as well. We want to make sure you guys are subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. Hey, if you know uh, somebody, if, well, we know that you've been listening to the podcast. You're likely not in a place where you can hit a subscribe button or take the time to give us one of those awesome five-star ratings or even write us a review. You may be driving or working out. Trying to hit or type a small little button while you're doing that can be dangerous or distracting. So please make sure you take the time later on in the day to uh, give us a subscription uh, give us a rating and a review of course and we won't let you guys know that anybody can do an interview on the XJ Talk Show if you got a cheap story to tell or maybe you have a show and shine or an off-road event in your town we definitely want to hear about it like to spread the word about it give us a call or email us at the same place you would for a Jeep news story at newstips at xjtalkshow.com I'm going to give you guys our 24-7 voicemail line real quick 530-675-4102 530-675-4102 voicemail line you guys can reach us there anytime of course nobody's going to answer that and we'd like to hear from you on that of course uh, please visit our Facebook page uh, make sure you guys uh, visit that and like uh, of course we're on Twitter at stitcherradio.com tunein.com iTunes YouTube boy we are all over the website and if you guys like the show please make sure you're telling a friend and don't forget, uh, you guys can be a part of the show as well. We always have a third seat open. It could be for you. In the meantime, please consider heading over to xjtalkshow.com. Our entire show archive is there for your uh, listening pleasure. And it's 100% free. And we'd like to see you guys here each and every week. We are broadcasting on YouTube as well as live on xjtalkshow.com. Every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central, we're in the chat room every week as well. You guys can interact with us live during the show at xjtalkshow.com. Easy for him to say. Man, listen to that. <laughs> listen to that. What is really, it has gone bad. It has just oh, gone but... bad. Well, well I, guys, I used it as much as I could, though. <laughs> yeah, you did. You got the use out of that. That's, that's for sure. Well, guys, while Tony figures out his electrical issues, I'm going to say farewell. Hope you guys have a great Jeep week and uh, go Seahawks for the Super Bowl. We'll see you guys next time on the XJ Talk Show. You guys have a Take great Take care and have a great Jeep week. Yeah, great Jeep week. <laughs> You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast.